Howdy folks, welcome back to War Thunder with the Mighty Jingles. I've been going through my replay archives and I've found a couple of games that for one reason or another I never ended up uploading. Um, don't know why, they must have gotten missed just in the pile of other videos that I had. This was taken um, shortly after I finally reached rank 13 in the Luftwaffe. It's prior to patch 1.31, um, and I finally, like a lot of you, you probably bought some of the campaign starter packs and got a gift aircraft with it when you uh, when you downloaded War Thunder. I made the mistake <laughs> of trying to fly aircraft like the Fokker Wolf 190 D13 Dora in a lineup with my reserve and rank one German aircraft. Yeah, that didn't end too well for me, and so. My D13 is still on free repairs, I've flown it that little. But now that I've finally reached rank 13 in the Luftwaffe, I can actually start putting this thing into my lineup and, you know, getting my money's worth out of it. So I have very, very little experience of flying the D13. And this is one of the first games I've flown in any of the Focke Wolf 190s. It's the Grand Strike on the crater map. And what took me by surprise was that the roll rate of the D13... Oh, there's an assist. That's good. The, the roll rate of the D13 is nothing short of phenomenal. Look at the way it flips over. Absolutely amazing. Of course, that's compensated for by the fact <laughs> that its pitch rate is garbage. It's very, very hard to pull this thing up. <sighs> okay, so we'll, we'll just pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> didn't just suck in the D13 in front of 87,000 subscribers. So, another new kid on the block. This was actually the very, very first game I've ever flown in my BF109 G6. I'd literally just unlocked it. And I could not believe the firepower of this aircraft. Obviously this game is prior to patch 1.31. As you'll see by the post-battle uh, results screen, it's completely different. And the G6 came with uh, all of those 30mm cannons by default. They weren't in unlockable underwing pylons. Now my aim still sucks. It hasn't gotten any better. I love this aircraft though. The firepower is just absurd. But the, the real aircraft was armed with those cannons, you know. It, it, oh, there's another assist. You know, that was the thing about the G6. It did have all of those 30mm cannons. It was that powerful an aircraft. In a straight line, this thing is monstrously fast. Or it, it feels monstrously fast. It's not really a dogfighter. But, oh, look at that. <laughs> you have got to be kidding. And it's, you know, it's just nice for the shoe to be on the other foot for a change because I've been shot down so many times by these things. Actually getting the opportunity to try it out for myself was, it, it was, it was fun. Of course, you've got to bear in mind that this is an arcade battle. You shouldn't be looking for realism in War Thunder arcade battles. Everybody has a very, very generous version of their real flight model in arcades, and, and not all the flight models are finished. That's one very unfortunate lag. Oh, it just blew apart. Hey, we seem to be doing all right. Not bad for a first run out, you know. I don't really... <coughs> I mean, I haven't flown the D-13 much, but... And I'm not saying it's a bad aircraft. I mean, if I tried to tell you it was a bad aircraft, you'd laugh me out of the room. Um, but I'm just not very good at flying it. And I, and I don't really... It's not a fun aircraft to fly. This is, see, this is why I love my Spitfires and my Zeros, because they're fun aircraft to fly. They might not be the most effective aircraft in the game. I mean, they're certainly not bad. But they're fun. 
and um, and here I am trying to uh, <laughs> I'm going after that TU2 I want to kill the bombers unfortunately it's the arcade flight model and that guy on my tail in arcade is just as capable of catching up to me as well anybody else it doesn't really matter what he's flying it's difficult to use a speed advantage in arcade you know if that's the sort of thing that floats your boat you want to be flying historical battles people get very upset when they fly arcade battles and boom and zoom aircraft and dogfighting aircraft manage to keep up with them it's not you know it's arcade it's not meant to be realistic and I was you know, I was just as guilty I used to rage at uh, being in my P-47 and watching Zeros keep up with me on the tail and shoot me down yeah, it's, if that sort of thing winds you up don't play arcade battles simple as that Now, you can see the damage that I've taken here, and this thing definitely, definitely handles, even in arcade, handles poorly when it starts taking damage. And that was one of the complaints that people were levelling at a lot of the Russian aircraft in particular, and that they could have this amount of damage and still fly as if they were pr in pristine condition. Well, that's one of the things that they are addressing, or have already addressed, and yet... Look at this. Critically damaged aircraft, and I'm still kicking ass. I did have a fair bit of luck on my side from this point on. Um, never really got bounced by more than one aircraft at a time. Just waiting here for my cannons to come back up and finish this guy. There we go. Those 30mm cannons take no prisoners. There's the old air wind streak. Critically damaged BF 109 G6. Still racking up the kills. And, you know, no reason why you shouldn't. If you're on somebody's tail and he's all alone, you should be able to shoot them down. The whole. Part of the whole trick. Often people say, Jingles, how do I get somebody off my tail when they're behind me? Well. <laughs> If somebody's on your tail, you've already, you know, <laughs> it's a bit late. Uh, the trick is to not let them get there in the first place. And there are things that you can do, but it depends on what aircraft you're flying, what they're in, what the situation is. But, you know, like I said, the single best thing is to not let them get there in the first place. Pick your targets with care. If there are two air enemy aircraft flying, you know, just something as basic as if there are two enemy aircraft flying below you, dive on the one at the back, not the one at the front. Because you're just putting yourself in the gun sights of the guy at the rear. Oh, two targets. Which one to shoot for? Uh, you'll do. The other one is going down, so I'll pick the right one to go for. Fritz is going to get you, Ivan. Down the machine guns again, wait for the cannons to reload. I'm doing everything he can, but... And I'm not the only one shooting at him, so... <laughs> he's fast running out of options. Oh, okay, right, well, yeah, speaking of running out of options, but I don't have a problem with that. You know, the aircraft was handling like a damaged aircraft because it was a critically damaged aircraft. And uh, I paid the price. So, one of my Fokker Wolf 190s. And I think this was the very first time I'd flown this thing as well. I mean, I had flown, I'd flown the D-13 a couple of times in two or three historical battles and two or three arcade battles back when it was the highest ranked aircraft I had and everything else was you know ten or more ranks below it and, and learned the hard way that you don't go <laughs> you don't go into arcade games with one rank 14 and a bunch of rank twos and threes uh, well you can but you'll be sorry so uh, you know as I said at the start of this video um, 
I'm finally at the stage now where I'm at rank 13, and I still am. I still haven't gotten any higher uh, than when this video was recorded. I'm, I'm at the rank where I can start putting my D13 in. I just need to learn how to fly the bloody thing properly. Um, uh, with a complementary lineup of other German aircraft. And I do like these German aircraft. I really do like them. I love the roll rate on these Fokker Wolves. Of course, as I found out the hard way, the pitch and yaw rate is not fantastic. There's another one. Yes. Oh, can we, can we make it a double kill? Oh, I don't know, he's a bit far away. And he is a Sturmovic. They are very heavily armoured. And I just... Nah, we're going in too fast and I couldn't really get the guns pointed at him. There he goes. Oh, well... I'll take an assist. Okay, right. The, now this is what I'm talking about, not making yourself a target. A whole bunch of fresh enemies, respawn pilots and new aircraft flying straight towards me. Don't charge into them. You're just making yourself... you just It's like flying around with a big shoot me sign over your neck. Break contact, get some distance. Always trying to fight. Uh, and this is probably advice I should be taking myself, because I keep screwing this up myself as well but always trying to engage in fights on your own terms you want all the advantages people complain that they get shot down it wasn't a fair fight well if you anybody who finds themselves in a fair fight didn't plan their attack properly right you want the fight to be as unfair for the enemy as you possibly can possibly make it that's your job oh an il-10 and i've just sat here talking about how how important it is that you make sure you're always having the fight dictated on your terms, and I'm going to completely fail to take my own advice. Because those guys who were coming in as fresh respawns are now on my ass. Because I'm... There we go. There they are. And there's at least three of them. But, you know, I've made my bed, I'm going to have to sleep in it now. I just need to make sure I kill this this Sturmovic. They're going to get me. Yeah, I got him. There he goes. So, Yak-19 nailed me. And it was totally my own fault. I saw them coming in. I fixated on the IL-10. And by the time they started shooting at me, it was too late. There was no way I was going to get three of them off my tail. All you can do at that stage is try to make sure that the guy that you've that you've killed yourself going after, make sure you get in. So it wasn't a complete waste. But, doing well. Uh, top the leaderboard so far. And that's always good when you're flying a new aircraft for the first time. Um, and, and possibly one of the reasons why I'm, I'm not having fun with the D-13 is because I really have had some bloody awful games in it. Um, you, you tend to find you, you make associations in your mind with different things based on your initial experiences with them. Um, I mean, say you take the Kitty Hawk out um, and your first half dozen games in it are just awful. You don't get any kills and you always get it shot down. You've made that association in your mind from that point on that the Kitty Hawk is a bad aircraft. Not because it's a bad aircraft, but because you've had bad games in it the first six games that you flew. And, and it takes a long time to shake that association in your brain because you've set up that negative connotation. Um, and I think I might have that problem, if you like, with the Fokker Wolf D13. Um, and yet none of the other Fokker Wolves, as you can see here, I'm, um, I'm not... Just check my flat there, because I knew there was another aircraft over on the other side. Oh, an LA-5. Mm. Completely lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Yeah, I mean, the Fokker Wolf D-13 is not a bad aircraft. It's one of the aircraft that everybody complains about the most. Um, I just have not had a good game in it. It doesn't mean it's a bad aircraft. It just means that, you know, in my mind, I associate the Fokker Wolf D-13 with abject failure, because... <laughs> I have suffered abject failure after abject failure in it. Now, 
It looks like some of them are coming after me, but that guy's going after our bomber. And if you look at the scores, I need to defend that Wellington. Because this is a ground strike map. Now that's right guys, occasionally people in arcade battles do defend the bombers. Gotcha. Keep this thing in a dive because I know that guy's going to loop around behind me and try to come on my ass. And we are winning, but the, you know, it's seven ground targets versus five ground targets. Is he going after me? Okay. He's not. And again, taking some damage. And that does negatively affect the roll rate, even in arcade battles. So, I really don't have a problem with the German aircraft. Everybody says, the G6 is overpowered, the D13 is overpowered. They're powerful aircraft. They're powerful aircraft because they were powerful aircraft. But at least when you shoot at a G6, and you shoot at a D-13, if you hit them, they behave as if they've been hit. Unlike certain of the Russian aircraft, and, you know, as is common knowledge by now, were being developed by separate development teams to the guys that were doing the German, British, Japanese and American aircraft. But guys, you never acknowledged the problem, and they're committed to fixing it. They're actually being very, very open about things like their flight models. They've, they've released the data sheets of the LA-5 and the D-13 uh, and quoted all of their sources. So, you know, anybody who actually knows aerospace engineering and flight dynamics can quite happily take a look at the figures and, and see where they've quoted the sources from. And, oh, that is not good. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Hey, we got him. It's very important we nail their bombers at this point. They... We need to get one more ground kill to win. So, I'm going to jump into the LA-5. Yes, I feel dirty. But I'm going to do it anyway, because we need to protect our bombers. But yes, as developers, I'm very impressed with Gaijin as developers. They... They... They're not like certain high-profile developers for Wargaming.net, uh, like Serb, their chief designer, and that's his nickname by the way, I'm not saying that he is from Serbia, I need to make that clear, because uh, he's a notorious troll, uh, and the Russian uh, fan base for World Attacks love him for it, but that's just the Russian sense of humour. Um, Europeans, not so much because he basically, if you think somebody's an idiot, he calls them an idiot. Um, and the PR department be damned. Gaijin don't do that. They really don't do that. They do, um, in my opinion anyway, do seem to be taking the complaints of the community seriously. Uh, and that's not to say they're just bending over and doing whatever the community demands they do. I'm not saying that. Um, they are addressing the community's concerns. And if they can't... Uh, how shall I say it? If they can't do what the community wants them to do, they will explain why in, you know, polite, reasonable and easy to understand terms. And doing things like releasing the flight data sheets for two of the most hotly debated aircraft in the game, the LA-5, or actually I think it was the LA-7, and the Focke Wolf D-13, is a step that you, you never see developers doing. So, um, you know, my hat's off to them for that. I, I do still have a lot of respect for Gaijin as a development company. Your mileage may, of course, vary. So anyway, there you go. Um, the first game that I flew in my German aircraft immediately after reaching rank 13 with the Luftwaffe. I, I do like those Focke Wolf 190s. I, I love the BF-109 G6. I still cannot get to grips <laughs> for some just weird reason. Uh, I, I just have problems with the Focke Wolf 190 D13, which is really, really weird because judging by all the crying about that aircraft and I've, I'm guilty of it myself in the past you'd think if there is one aircraft in the game that any noob <laughs> could jump into uh, and do well in it would be the Focke Wolf 190 D13 but there's always some idiot who can't and I am that idiot <laughs> anyway folks uh, 
I hope you're still enjoying the game. I know I am. Um, and as always, watch your six, and I'll catch you next time.